Firstly, a big thank you to MSA for making it possible for Tim and myself to attend Computex 2019. Please check out their latest AMD X570 motherboards made for gamers and creators via the link in the video description. Also, a thank you to Corsair for their support. Please check all their exciting products out via the link in the video description. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. This is part two of the May, but sort of in June, sort of Computex special edition Q&A. We are live here. Well, live for us, not live <laughs> for you guys. It's a recording. But we are here in Taipei. It's been, been pretty nice. But more importantly, there's more of your questions to get to. So let's get into it. All right, Jed's asked us a question, I believe, about third-gen Ryzen-related stuff. With the advent of third-gen Ryzen potentially taking the performance crown, Will you all consider updating your GPU test bench to an R9 3900X, assuming it's the absolute best like AMD is claiming, or would you prefer to keep the 9900K test bench so that you don't have to retest all of the GPUs you've reviewed for the last year or so? Uh, well, that last bit's somewhat irrelevant because we usually update all our results every few months. Uh, so, yeah, that doesn't really matter. I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, we'll probably throw out most of our results in... I don't know, the next month or so. It really depends. It depends on how many new games we add and things like that. But that's not really a consideration. Really, the only reason we use the 9900K or the 8700K, but that's, yeah, the 9900K recently, is because it's the fastest processor for gaming, uh, period. It, it really is. Uh, so if the, I think if, if Ryzen's even close to that, we would probably still consider sw uh, switching over to the Ryzen uh, CPUs, especially if that's what we're recommending. So ideally, I would like to use the Ryzen 7 2700X, but yeah, you've seen the benchmarks. So yeah, if it gets close, I think I would still use the Ryzen processor anyway, just because I imagine that's what we'll be recommending in all our builds and whatnot going yep. forward. So it make much more sense to test with that. And I think, have I, have I addressed that question? I think, I think the interesting thing will be to see whether it's the 12 core or the 8 core part that delivers sure. the best overall gaming performance, especially when you factor in like overclocking, because I believe you overclock your... 1900k yes, test I'll over, rig I'll, yeah i'll overclock them again that's for the most part it makes no difference whatsoever but sometimes it's 1080p if it's a really cpu intensive tile then you'll remove the cpu as uh, potentially being a performance limiting component so yeah i it doesn't i'm not sure if it'll be the 8 or the 12 core probably whichever overclocks the best it'll be a frequency thing there obviously 8 cores right now for gaming is plenty and 12s just overkill so but if they're the same, I'll probably go for the overkill option. Yep. We tend to do that with the benchmarking systems. Oh, it's good to see another Tim commenting on our videos oh. and asking questions. So other Tim asks, how will you test the new Navi GPUs? Will you test them with a Ryzen 3000 CPU to take advantage of their PCIe 4.0 support? Or will you put them in your 9900K test bench and run them with PCIe 3.0? Or will you test them with both an Intel system and a Ryzen system? <laughs> All the possibilities there. Uh, well, who knows? Basically, uh, it depends on timing. If they're released around the same time as the Ryzen processors, we would continue to use our updated 9900K results. It wouldn't really make sense to retest everything. But naturally, I would look at if using Gen 4 PCI Express makes any difference to performance for the Navi uh, GPUs. I'm expecting it will make no difference at all. It really won't matter. Uh, I doubt that's, that card will be saturating the PCIe uh, 3.0 interface, but we'll, we'll yeah. test it anyway. I'm expecting to find no difference. That's really a future-proofing thing, that term future-proofing. But the boards that do support P, you know, fourth-gen PCI Express, uh, they'll be pretty cool products to have buying secondhand in like five to however many years, because then the cards then will certainly be saturating the uh, third-gen spec uh, expansion slots so. yeah it seems like that spec is more designed for your storage type stuff that's right adding in lots of m.2 slots yeah m.2 cards i should say yeah yeah initially yeah. especially if you you know raid zero cards and stuff like that uh, initially that's certainly where you'll be able to use the bandwidth but for graphics cards i'm not expecting that to be uh, much of a game changer so for now okay we have a comment here from cheeky keith at wccf tech he said what's in the box so I think that's a, a, a play on words for our name, Harbour on Box. I, I, I don't know. I, what do you want about, Keith? It, got, it was one of the most heavily upvoted comments. Everyone's uh -huh. in on this joke except for us. Yeah, we don't get it. So, so let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the next question? 
Doesn't look like Tim is ready for the next question. Have you caught up? Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Right, good. Good stuff. Why does Steve lose the will to live whenever Tim goes on about monitors? Bit of a funny, that one. I don't know if you're actually joking with this. Some people may not have got the joke and we joked about it once and maybe they thought I was serious. I didn't like it when Tim talks about monitors, which I, I do like it when Tim talks about monitors and I do find it interesting. But I think in one Q&A, we had a lot of monitor related questions and I was sort of sitting back, relaxing, listening and people thought I was sitting there slowly suffering through Tim's explanations. But no, I, I genuinely do like Tim's monitor talk. Um, well, that's good. The, well, the, <laughs> the, the joke sort of... Uh, came to be because yeah because of that video i talked about and there was sort of a behind the scenes joke i think with the patreon members because we went to it was last year's computex wasn't yeah, it? it was we went to one of the uh parties with the manufacturers and the what the, the the manufacturer uh manufacturer that we were talking to were getting into monitors so they said tim we'd like to pick your brains what is it that we have to do right and all this sort of stuff so then tim was just running his mouth for a good hour and th they were enjoying it they were taking notes and everything and tim was just yeah filling them with information and i think i was there with kev from tech showdown and we were sitting back just laughing at tim educating them on monitors it's quite quite amusing but anyway no i do enjoy tim's stuff about monitors he's very knowledgeable about them so it's good to listen to anyway uh we'll move on actually here we go a monitor question okay what GPU? Oh, sort of, sort of half a monitor okay. question. What GPU and monitor would you pair with the 3900X for 4K gaming? Well, I'll do the the GPU. Side. Okay, yeah, okay, go for it. And I'll do the four. I'll do the monitor question. A 4K monitor. <laughs> so, uh, for 4K gaming, I mean, really, CPU's somewhat irrelevant. Uh, you really just want a really powerful uh, GPU. So, the RTX 2080 Ti right now is obviously the most preferable choice. Otherwise, your RTX 2080 will It'll get by with a few tweaks here and there. The same applies to the GTX 1080 Ti, and then of course the Radeon 7 graphics card. Um, so that's pretty much a graphics card. You're looking at spending what $700 plus? Yeah, definitely, definitely that high-end GPU. Yeah. I mean, for the monitors, there's kind of sort of your three directions that you can go in right now. You can get sort of your basic 4K 60 hertz panel, but none of those are super amazing. You know, they have limited FreeSync ranges, so you, the FreeSync experience isn't great. But I guess one of the ones I liked from the sh actually the show floor was the new MSI model, which I think okay. was was supposed to come in at like 300 to 350 US mm -hmm. in, when it launches in the next couple of months. So that's one to look out for for that. Then you've got your 4K high refresh non-HDR. There's the Acer Nitro monitor. I can't remember the model name because they're all okay. impossible to remember. I didn't see that one. That's your 4K 144 hertz. Um, I think those are about $900. So again, it just depends on how much money mm -hmm. you have to spend. So that, that's really the next step up for 4K. And then you've got your G-Sync Ultimate monitors, you know, your Asus PG27UQ, your Acer X27, the full HDR. They're about 1600 or 1700 okay, US yep. at the moment. So even it's more e expensive yeah. than the RTX 2080 Ti. It's either one of those tiers. So I mm -hmm. think you know if you're a high roller and mm -hmm. you're, you're buying 2080 Ti's, then you probably want at least that mid tier option, the $900 one, yep. um, for a really excellent experience. And those monitors should last for quite a while with their capabilities. So yeah, cool. Oh, thank God that monitor talks over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> With the concern about cooling the chipset and the beefier VRMs and heat sinks needed for the 12 and 16, well, the unannounced 16 core CPUs, do you think air coolers and better airflow across motherboards are that they bring will be superior, well, will be a superior cooling method uh, for sustained CPU performance, particularly for overclocking on X570? Uh, okay, a few things to address there. So I've just nearly dropped my phone and now I've lost where that question was. I'll continue anyway. Uh, so there's a seems like there's a bit of a misconception with the whole beefy VRMs and things like that. Or people are just making a few assumptions, thinking, "Oh, it's got 12 cores now. The the VRMs have been beefed up on all X X570 motherboards. These CPUs must be really power hungry." Which certainly isn't the case. We've already seen the TDPs have dropped by what about 40 percent? Yeah, they're massively lower. So I think what is that the 3800X is 40 percent lower than the 2700X. So they're much more efficient. The seven nanometer parts, the efficiency, yeah, based on what we're seeing with the TDPs, looks to be very good. And the 12 core part is only a 105 watt TDP part. So uh, that's 2700X type TDP. So it shouldn't really be that much more power hungry than that processor. Uh, obviously, the XFR precision boost, all that stuff comes into play with better cooling. 
But yeah, I wouldn't be stressing about your, your motherboard or your cooling, like if you're using an older you know, X470 board or something like that. Um, I think people are getting confused because it's kind of on the Intel CPU front, we've just seen them go from four to six to eight. Yep. And that just adds power each time because they're still being on roughly the same True. process node with 14 True. nanometers. But this is this is definitely very different with the move to seven nanometers. Um, the 3700X is what, 65 watts on eight cores? Yep. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, very, very impressive. So uh, obviously upgrading the cooler... Well, we don't know anything about XFR yet. If it's anything like a Zen Plus, you might see like a 100 megahertz bump. But the coolers we've got available now we're using, will the same will apply. Because as I said, it's yeah. a st- they're still 65 watt, 95 watt, 105 watt parts. So nothing really changes there. All right, another Discord question here. We you know, seems to be about monitors, which I'm sure will bore Steve. <laughs> <sighs> uh, do you see the 18:9 aspect ratio becoming a widespread thing across many more devices than it already is? I'm talking mid-range and low-end phones, along with maybe even monitors. Um, can't really see it being too much of a thing for monitors because it's like it's slightly wider than 16:9, and it's not 21:9. So I don't, I don't think there's much demand for that mid-step between your ultra-wide and your standard 16.9. Your mid-wide. Um, I can see it being used a lot in phones because the whole reason it was introduced for phones is because, you know, you got this screen, or you got this body of a phone, and there were parts at the top and bottom that weren't used. Mm-hmm. So they just basically extended the screen into that area, and, it, you know, it came out to be around 18.9. So, yeah, that would make a lot of sense, but can't see it being used for monitors too much, I wouldn't have thought. All right, this is an in- interesting question for those that, like, sort of behind-the-scenes looks at stuff. Um... Whenever you guys shoot a vid, is it just Tim or Steve holding the camera? Is it just the two of you, or do you have editing staff? <gasps> PS, first time commenting, just wanted to participate. Love your vids. Oh, right, thank well, you. Thanks. thanks. So, um, yeah, all of our videos, at least uh, I'm assuming you're talking mostly about our Computex stuff here, is yep. going to be I'm holding the camera, Steve's in front of the video, or the other way around. We don't have any editing staff. We didn't bring editing staff to Computex. We don't have them for our regular coverage. It's just us two. So, you know, if we're making a video in either of our studios, you know, I'm setting up the camera, then walking around and sitting in front of it and then editing the video. So that's kind of how it goes. Just a tripod and a camera. It's yeah. quite lonely. All right, next question is, when will AMD announce third-gen APUs? So... I assume you mean Ryzen 3000 series APUs because yep. those would actually be the second generation of APUs mm-hmm. uh, on the Zen Plus architecture. I would imagine it's probably not too far away, but it would be a pretty low-key launch, I would have thought, considering it's not a Zen 2 processor. On the mobile side, we only saw like 100 megahertz upgrades to the mm-hmm. clock speed, so really not that much happened there. So, yeah, I would expect it you know, in the next couple of quarters at least, you know, before the end of the year is probably what I'd be expecting. But again, very low key, I would imagine. Yeah, it's a bit confusing with the whole third gen APU naming, but yeah, yeah, it is what it is because there was no first generation APUs. Basically, is what yeah made that all confusing. All right, we'll jump to the next one here. Do you think B five fifty chipsets will require active cooling like the X five seventy chipsets? Uh, or chipset rather. Um, hmm. I have to have a think about that for a moment. Uh, I would say yes, because they're still oh, going to... Okay. Well, will they... It's a, well... See, I would have gone with no, and they won't support PCIe 4.0. Well, that's what I was about to say. It, it all depends on, uh, yeah, the, the, the PCI Express support there. Uh, hmm, I, I, I've heard nothing, so it would be just guesswork. It's one or the other. Yeah. I um, mean, we'd heard that, you know, some of the X570 motherboards do cost a fair bit more to make. So I guess not they, just from the yeah, chipset, but I, all the additional wiring and stuff they've done to sort of enhance the PCIe sure, 4.0 so experience. That's right. So I guess based on what we have heard, the answer would be no, because yeah. they won't. Because um, you think they'd, they'd cut that first to make not just the chipset cheaper, but also to make the wiring for the motherboard cheaper sure. to, make, to bring the whole board down in yes. terms of price. So yep. um, yeah, yeah, I'd probably go with no. Yeah. Yep, on, on reflection. Yeah, have I convinced uh, I, you? On reflection, I, I believe that Tim is correct there. Yeah, I don't think they will, and that would make sense because it makes the, the B550 uh, more affordable. How the B550 then will differ from the B450, which doesn't really differ from the B350, will be a whole different story. Yeah. Uh, basically, it just affords motherboard manufacturers the ability to update their boards and add anything new, like maybe new Wi-Fi standards yeah. and things like that. I'd be interested to see 
like some of the better VRMs that have come sure. out for X570 yeah. come to B550 at a more but then, affordable price but then yeah. not have PCIe if you don't need that because then you get a pretty decent board to support 12 core or future 16 core CPUs on a good platform without necessarily wanting that feature it, it does make a lot of sense really because yeah you don't need most people don't need Gen 4 SSDs in their system like your three and a half gigabytes per second for sequential read and writes is probably sufficient for most users. We know it has no impact on gaming performance or anything like that. Anyway, we worked through that question and I think we probably got to a... Yep. Well, actually, there's a, a good follow-up question oh, here. here we go. Uh, some more on PCIe, actually. Do you yep. think PCIe 4.0 and faster drives can improve CPU performance? For example, will it improve Cinebench or Blender scores? Uh, no. Well... That all depends on stuff like GPU acceleration, I suppose, uh, for Blender. Initially, no, I would have thought, no, it won't make any difference. Yeah. Um, it's unlikely something yeah. would be GPU, PCIe bandwidth limited yeah. or storage limited. I mean, the st storage benchmarks will improve. But Massive, if you're using, yeah. There's uh, not really a workload that sort of I would think would be impacted too much. Yeah, your Cinebench scores are going to be improved by more cores higher IPC, all that sort of stuff. Not so much PCIe 4.0, yep. um, I think it's fair to say on that one. And guess what? The next question is also about PCIe 4.0. <laughs> what would PCIe 4.0 do for gaming at the moment? Do you think it could have been released later and made little to no difference to most consumers? Who does it really benefit with its introduction to consumer hardware? Okay, well, I, I think I can answer this one Yep. reasonably well. Uh, it has no benefit for gaming, uh, there'll be you know, your Navi-based GPUs that use it. I'm expecting there'd be no difference between 3.0 and 4.0 for the initial uh, release of GPUs. I think it'll be beneficial down the track. And that's... So the next question is, will it be beneficial for consumers? Uh, again, we just said for storage, absolutely, if you need ridiculously high-speed storage, like yeah, crazy fast storage, then it will be beneficial. For most people, it won't be. It'll just be a thing you have. But it is that future proof thing it is actually a genuine way of or usually future proofing is just a silly thing but this is kind of a cool thing because you won't have to upgrade down the track because you've already got it and we know looking back at older systems if you buy an older xeon system or something like that you're stuck with sometimes like pci express 2.0 that really does hamper performance so you are better off with a system with the current spec so yeah getting it now it just means uh that these boards coming out will be pretty cool items down the track. It's not, I know that doesn't benefit the people buying them now, but you're not really buying it just for that. So yeah, it's, it's really going to benefit those situations when you're trying to use multiple high speed IO devices simultaneously. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah, you could buy like, you know, M.2 expander cards or something mm -hmm. like that, run multiple drives, RAID zero, yep. or use other functionality in conjunction with the M.2 and not have that be bandwidth limited through PCI 4.0. That's the main thing. Yep. But whether or not that'll be you know, a big deal for you will depend on what your system is. Yeah, it definitely allows you to do more. Uh, yeah, it's probably not going to benefit everyone, but at the same time, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's good to have. Yeah, exactly. Okay, another question here from our Patreon our Discord. Was making those ITX builds for your Computex coverage worth it? I uh, think a pretty clear yes on that one from me. They've yep. been really awesome. Um, having a, a desktop Ryzen 7 2700X has been brilliant. They've worked flawlessly. Tim and I have rendered multiple videos very quickly. Tim's been a little bit let down by his GTX 1050 graphics card. A few uh, <laughs> GPU accelerated bugs there. My R9 Nano has been fantastic. I actually can't really tell the difference from my Vega 56 rig at home. In fact, it's not actually that much different from my Threadripper uh, Vega uh, Vega 56 unit. I mean, it's a bit slower, but it's not world slower. Like it's got half as many cores, so you'd expect quite a reduction there. But yeah, the 26 uh, the 2700X rather is working really well. Yeah, I'd agree. It's been really good. Definitely better than the the laptop solutions that we were bringing uh, last year. So I think yeah. we'll be continuing doing the mini ITX thing for Computex. The, uh, the difficult yeah. thing is bringing the monitor along. Well, we did that last year with the laptop yeah. anyway because to do it, using a 1080p monitor is a nightmare. But it's kind of crazy. At one stage, Tim and I were both rendering out a video and then sitting there and recording audio like we are now. And you had no idea there were systems in the background, whereas last year, it'd just be that high-pitched 
screaming noise. Yeah, so that's good. So, yeah, they've been absolutely fantastic. We'll definitely be bringing them next year, no doubt about that. Hopefully, we'll be bringing them with uh, an X570 motherboard with maybe a 12-core part, possibly a 16-core part, depending on what happens there. But yeah, yeah that'd that, be awesome. That, that's the plan for next year for sure. Another question here from one of our Patreon members. So when you are reading this, we should finally know all the Ryzen 3000 stuff. Thankfully, we do. At this point, what test do you have in mind for day one slash soon after day one coverage? Uh, IPC test, uh, inter-chiplet latency test, memory compatibility. The list would no doubt go on. Uh, yeah, for day one... I definitely want to test quite a few games because that's going to be something you guys are really going to want to know about. So I'm hoping to test oh, at least eight games uh, against a whole heap of CPUs, at least eight for the day one stuff, and then the usual mix of applications. And then, yeah, hopefully I can do mix in a few of those sort of custom tests as if a bit of a preview and probably all those things would be good. Um, IPC test, yeah, we're probably going to do a brief IPC test because the 15% thing, everyone's going to want some... Confirmation on that, uh, inter-chiplet latency testing, that, yeah, depending on how the gaming testing goes, we may do that, but these are all definitely stuff, you know, tests I want to do, memory compatibility, absolutely, what we can actually overclock to, uh, uh, there'll be so many more tests, yep. it's not funny, there'll be, it's, it's if we're going to cop all the, oh, Ryzen Unbox stuff again, because it's just such an interesting platform, uh, and it's sort of newish, so yeah, everyone's going to be excited about it. It's going to be loads of content. So if you hate hearing about Ryzen, then you're not really going to enjoy our channel over the next two to three months, I'd say. Next question. This one's about why Tim is so cheap, I think. So why is it that Tim prefers to record video footage at 30 FPS like a peasant rather than 60 FPS like Steve uses, like a champion? But you want to explain um, that? Explain that for us, Tim. So, well, first up, for a long time, it's because the camera I've been using can only record 4K 30fps. So that's the main reason. But I do, I did buy a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera that can do 4K 60fps, but I'm still not particularly interested in using it at the 60fps mode. I just prefer the way that 30fps videos look. I know you, Steve, you prefer the 60fps look. So that's kind of just the reason why we do it each of our ways. Mm -hmm. But I know you've got a, a comment here as well about uh, thanking me for uploading them at true 30 FPS rather than frame doubling it to 60 FPS. That was actually an accident. I was going to upload it at 60 FPS. The, the main reason for that is that you get more bandwidth on YouTube. You get a, you, They allow you to use a higher bit rate when you uh, upload a 60 FPS video. So that means that even if it's frame doubled, you should see better quality from the 60 FPS upload. And I'm all about making the videos as high quality as we can possibly deliver them through YouTube to you. So even though I'm, you know, rendering and doing everything at 30 FPS, I'll upload them at 60 just so that you guys can see the highest possible quality. Yep. yep. He's a peasant. <laughs> All right, last question here. Uh, yeah, it's a doozy. Are you two in the same bed to save money? <laughs> Yeah, we spoon every night. That's yeah, real I, good. I, I, <laughs> I love stuff like that because I know I, while we were going through this Q&A, sitting at this, I knew people would be like, why are they sitting so close together? Oh, they're, they're definitely a couple. Look how close they're sitting together. <laughs> There'll definitely be so many comments about how uh, the proximity at which yep. Tim and I are sitting together with one another. It's like, yeah, stop touching me. Um, but no, we, we have the same room, but we have two separate beds. Yeah. So. Yeah, sorry to disappoint you. We're not we're not sharing a bed for the whole week at Computex. That would be terrible. Ah, oh, come on, wouldn't be uh, that bad. Yeah, it'd be perfectly fine. It'd be fine. No dramas at all. Um, anyway, I think that'll that'll do it for that question. Moving right along. And that just about does it for part two of our Computex special edition Q and A for May. Thanks to everyone who posted a question on either their, our YouTube channel or now. Discord chat for our Patreon members and a quick plug for the Patreon there. You do get access to our cool Discord community, so it's well worth signing up. And a quick plug for Jared of Jared's Tech for lending us his room, putting yep. up with us. Well, he's over there. He's trying to write some scripts and he's like typing really slowly and quietly. Yeah, we're bothering so, him big time. Yeah, but yeah, what a champ. <laughs> Go subscribe to Jared's Tech. Anyway, uh, what else? Subscribe to our channel as well. It's yeah, you can do that if you haven't. Yeah. don't know why you wouldn't. Have. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> that would be a bit strange. And of course, like the video if you did like it. And I guess we'll catch you, well, I guess probably in the end of June will be our next Q&A. So well, we'll try and get it 
in well within the month. Yeah, time, we've, so we've failed the last two times. Yeah, cutting in a bit fine. So yeah. hopefully the June Q and A will be in June. And I guess we'll see you in that one. I'm your host Tim, and I'm your host Steve. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>